After doing not one but two videos about how cool and pretty KDE apps are, well, I realized that lately I haven't praised GNOME's apps as much as I would like to, so it is now the time for me to do that, because if there's one thing where GNOME absolutely nails it, in my very humble opinion, is applications. There's a big difference with KDE though. In our land, the coolest and biggest apps are usually part of KDE itself, which is why KDE is a not a desktop, but a community. Instead, I often see that the great progress in the GNOME world is either third party or part of the GNOME Circle initiative, which I've mentioned lots of time by now. But truly, forget about the GNOME Circle completely right now and let's focus on the third party apps world. There's a particular project that I would like to praise to start this video, and that's Nick Vision Applications. So, what's Nick Vision? The name gives me a lot of uh, cartoon network vibes, but it's actually a team of developers working on quality open source GNOME applications. This was created very recently, and they introduced themselves through this meme, which, by the way, makes fun of a couple of KDE applications. I am quite impressed by the fact that there would be enough and so high quality and so active, actively developed applications that are third party but from the same team that they would create their own organization almost. So let's start looking at the applications themselves and the most impressive one in my humble opinion is the Narrow. This application is only a few months old which makes it all the more impressive that it has so many features and while well, such a good design. You can create an account that will be stored locally as your end money file. You can set up your preferred currency and a password to be as good an application is opened. And now we have an overview with all the transactions on the right and on the left a column with income and expenses, groups of transactions and a calendar. If you were worried about but the end money file I mentioned earlier, by the way, don't be. The application exports to CSV and PDF, which covers most of the use cases you'd expect out of it. Now, let's try to do some transactions to see how it actually works. For each transaction, you get to select a description, an amount, obviously, a date, whether it should be repeated or not, the group and its color, and you can download a receipt and write extra notes just in case. Of course, you can create multiple accounts, which will show up as tabs on the application, and you can transfer money between accounts. You can also change the currency for each uh, transaction, and overall, everything works really well. If I may bring up some criticism, and nobody can stop me, I will point out that the screen to transfer the money in between accounts is quite difficult to use, and that I would love to have the ability to sort of create sub-accounts, or at least a better way to organize the income into some categories. Currently, I manage all of my income by manually editing spreadsheets and, I'm not kidding you here, Sankematic files, so I would love to find a money tracking application that's able to nicely fit all of my use cases. Let's switch to another application. Nick Vision also offers Tube Converter, which will download videos and audio from the web, mostly from YouTube, and Tagger, which is an editor for file metadata. The former is pretty simple. You give it a YouTube link as an example and you select output file type, quality, whether to download the subtitles and if so, in what extension, where to save it, and this is the newest feature introduced just last week, you can select a maximum speed limit. I'm actually not sure about the exact use cases of such feature, but as always, that's on me. Done all of that, you will get to an overview with all of your downloads and you can add new ones or stop them. I don't have instead much to say about Tagger, mostly because it again does exactly what you would expect for it to do. You can select a folder, you'll be able to see all music files inside of it, and by selecting one you'll be able to start editing any metadata property. I actually used to spend a lot of time fixing all the metadata of the songs I had offline to make sure they nicely displayed in my music player, now I just use YouTube Music. 
But of course, there are other third-party applications that follow the GNOME look and feel. And the most impressive thing is that they're being released super quickly as well. Just that two weeks ago, as an example, we got a new application called Dino. That's a client for XMPP chats and allow you to do video calls with other people as well. And the interface is fully consistent or at least extremely consistent, I'm not a GNOME designer, with GNOME design guidelines. Or when I see another third-party application that's doing wonders, there has been recently a major update to the graphs application, which is used to plot, well, graphs. As you know, I study mathematics uh, in my real life, so I always get excited when I see a nicely plotted sign equation. A sentence that in Italian would be extremely funny. Mi eccito sempre quando vedo un bel seno. Well, now let me see. The latest release comes with a complete revamp of the UI, which now fully follows the GNOME HIG, that is the Human Interface Guidelines. You also have a plot style editor where you can change colors, ticks, grids, and so on. You can save projects as a single file to open up later, and of course there are a lot of bug fixes all over the place as well just in the latest release. The application looks gorgeous and it allows you to directly apply changes on the data like normalizing it, but also taking the derivative and the integral. Two other things that excite me a lot, obviously. Before I get talking about apps that are closer to GNOME itself, let me also remark that I often see third-party GNOME apps that simply look gorgeous, something that I just don't see as often in the KDE world. Take Cartridges as an example, which again released an update just two weeks ago. Look at it. Don't stop, don't stop looking. Don't you tell me what to do, I'll do what I want! The latest version brought animated cover and a redesigned details view and I could honestly spend hours just looking at the blur and animation. Okay, now let's start talking about the above mentioned GNOME Circle. You know from the GNOME 44 release video that many third party applications are joining the circle, which seems to be extremely successful. Just last week, there's a new one called Telegraph. The application is extremely simple. You can paste a normal message and it will be translated to Morse code or the opposite. The maintainer is Philippe Kinoshita. That's probably not how you pronounce it, which is uh, which shouldn't come as a new name since the very same developer was highlighted a couple of times on this channel since he did some pretty cool applications for KDE as well. This is not the only simple GNOME Circle application. We actually have multiple applications that do one extremely specific thing, but very well and with a great design. Just in the last few months, as an example, we saw the introduction of Chess Clock, which, well, you know, is a chess clock, but also Lorem to generate Lorem Ipsum text, Clairvoyant to get answers to your deepest philosophical questions and uh, so on. But not all of these applications are simple proof of concept, which finally, finally brings me to one of the apps I envy the most about the, about the GNOME ecosystem, which is called Workbench. It's the sort of application that I would love to have for KDE as well, but there isn't uh, anything quite like it. So Workbench is a tool for developers to experiment with GNOME technologies. It basically shows you the code, JavaScript, CSS, and XML or Blueprint, for some elements, and it shows you a preview of those elements in a side pane. You can change the code and it will update the GNOME interface live. And if this wasn't cool enough, you can also click on the library button on the top left, which is going to give you a super long set of examples to start working on. As an example, if I want to learn a bit about how the grid layouts work in the GNOME world, I'll just select grid and I'll immediately get a proof of concept implementation of uh, tic-tac-toe. It's hard for me to fully express just how useful this is for developers, but believe me, I'd totally love to have something like this for KDE. Please, somebody. Interestingly enough, just last week, Workbench received an improvement that made it fully sandboxed, meaning that it is now considered safe by the GNOME software which is the kind of label that's supposed to make me feel more relaxed, but it actually doesn't. What do you mean it wasn't safe to use before? It could kill my system, kidnap me during the night, and just, just kidding. 
There are a lot of existing GNOME applications that received some big improvements as well as super recently. Take Authenticator as an example. Just a couple of weeks ago, it released an update 4.3.0 that completely revamped the code base and ported the whole application to GTK4 and Trust. The application is a generator of two-factor authentication codes, allowing you to log in where you use 2FA. And the latest version also brought the ability to back up your credentials with free OTP plus JSON and importing images files containing your codes. Or do you want to see another GNOME application that super recently improved its design and such? Take a look at WIK, WIK, which I guess is pronounced VK since Wikipedia is actually pronounced Wikipedia, like Encyclopedia. The application just three weeks ago released its second major version, which migrated the application to JTK4 and Libadwaita. As a result, again, the application is completely consistent with the GNOME design guidelines and it looks gorgeous. You have color schemes, which is genuinely so amazing. By the way, we do all agree that Solarized is the best color scheme, right? You also now have an always visible search bar on the top, which shows you the selected language, a type to search func functionality, even if you don't select the search bar, a side pane that function as a table of content, bookmarks, history, a new view of the menu that allows you to change the theme, zoom, and font, a responsive design if you're using this on a mobile phone, an option to print the current page to a printer or to PDF, a new icon for the application. That's such a niche update. And the coolest thing is that these updates happen pretty frequently in the world of GNOME applications. Anyway, I'll now switch from these third-party applications to showcasing an app that should be in theory soon part of the GNOME itself, since it is now in the incubator. This is because it provides a core functionality, since it's a next-generation camera application supporting both desktop and mobile devices, and it's called Snapshot. On Flatpak, you can find version 44, which is a pretty Preview release of the application. So if you want to see how taking pictures and videos from the webcam will be in GNOME moving forward, then I would suggest trying this one out. Another application that's currently in heavy development and incubating in GNOME is Loop, which should become, if I understood this correctly and I'm not sure I do, the default image viewer of GNOME. Just a couple of weeks ago, it received a very nice set of improved scale, the margin, and so on. SVG was revamped in the past months, and in the last latest update, it received significant speed improvements as well, which allows for zooming in huge SVGs quickly. Finally, one feature I use a lot, drag and dropping a set of images into loop to browse between them. So what else to say? These were obviously just a few examples that I selected because they got updated, updated so recently and they provide a good look at just how active the GNOME world is in terms of applications. Be those first party apps, which I haven't even mentioned due to lack of time, or incubating app, or GNOME Circle apps, or even third party applications. If you read the This Week in GNOME blog posts, you will see that you'll receive new apps and new features pretty much every week, and they all look pretty and consistent. So whatever GNOME is doing with apps, it's doing it right. And I think that KDE has something to learn from GNOME in this regard. So that was everything. Uh, thank you everybody for following this whole video. And thanks for in general, you know, following my channel and stuff. It's going really well and I do want, as always, to thank all the people that not only watch the channel but also actively support it through donations and such. You can see their names around me floating in the air. Thanks everybody, thanks Malibul for also sp supporting everything that I do, which is not for free at all actually, you know, paying the editor, the lights, the camera, the teleprompt, everything has a price. So thanks everybody because otherwise I wouldn't be doing any of it. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do any of this. Let's say that. So, see you in a couple of days with a new video.